we even? I should close those windows. Hey plant fam! Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Jacqueline. This is not my jungle. As you know, if you've been here before, this is my spare room. I've just dragged a bunch of my plants in here. So it's a temporary jungle for today. It's a begonia jungle. So yeah, if you didn't guess, today we're going to be talking about begonias, specifically cane begonias, because they're the only ones that I can keep alive. So yeah, Rex begonias and I don't get along. We're on a no Rex begonia by ban, if that makes sense. Basically, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cane begonias here. I hope I'm not missing any. Oh, I am. My Linda Dawn. Let me go grab it. Hold on. Okay. We got her. She's looking real sad, but we got her. So that's kind of part of the video today too, but we'll get there. I need a drink. You guys know I'm obsessed with these like Trader Joe's green tea, pineapple juice seltzers. They have a black tea and peach one that David likes, but I'm not a big peach fan. They're good because it's not artificial peach flavor, but I like green tea better. Anyway, when you're filming and talking for a long period of time, my throat gets dry and then I end up clearing it way too often. I hope the lighting's okay. It's a rainy, gloomy day, so I have the window a little bit more open than usual. Hopefully we look okay. Begonias. I have nine cane begonias here, all different varieties, most of which I know the name of, some of them I don't, but I want to talk to you about begonias and how to take care of them. So first I kind of wanted to go through and show you my collection and then talk about how to take care of these babes because a few of you have reached out and told me that you're just kind of winging it and you don't really know what you're doing. I didn't know what I was doing either, I was just winging it and I think I've got it figured out so yeah my favorite is my begonia maculata this was my first because I'm just obsessed with these leaves you've seen this plant a lot it's usually off to the side in like all my videos that I film in my bedroom so she got hit pretty badly with the thrips she's got some damage to her leaves but Thankfully, she didn't lose any. She's just not really growing a whole bunch of new ones, and some of the new ones did come in a little wonky, but otherwise, she's doing okay. She's one of my favorites. This one's called Maculata Whitey Eye. I think I'm saying that right. I don't know. So that one is definitely my favorite, and she is the reason why I was like, hey, maybe I can try other begonias once I was able to keep her happy. I had her in my greenhouse for a while when I first got her and then she got too tall to be in there so I took her out and I wasn't sure what was going to happen and she's been fine. Her leaves don't come in as big I think partially because she's not getting that extra humidity anymore but she's still beautiful and I never get tired of these leaves. I was going to include her in my video where I talked about all my favorite leaves. I will link that for you guys up here somewhere. And uh, yeah, but I did mention this one. My begonia you guys helped me ID is called Cracklin' Rosie. She's huge. I'm going to go through this again. She's huge. So I mean... She's fine too. She's not, she doesn't need any love today. She's definitely going to need a repot. I want to get her like a cute basket to throw her in because this is a really big container and um, she seems fine for now. Her soil is not bad. She's not unhappy. She's putting out new growth. I'm probably going to trim her and propagate her for a few people who have shown interest in her because I mean, I have plenty to cut. I have her staked up with these bamboo stakes or else she'd be flopping over much like this one. This one is my Begonia Benigo Pink. I don't know if you could really see these leaves. So I picked this one up probably like at Lowe's or Home Depot on clearance or something like that and she has just grown like 
out of control but i almost kind of like her trailing like this like i don't know what do you guys think should i let this begonia trail the leaves don't come in as big but i think she kind of looks cute as a trailing plant so i haven't cut her back i've just kind of let her do her thing i don't really know i'll probably cut her back <laughs> it's funny because I have cut plants back, begonias back before. You guys would have seen in a really old video where I rescued this one from Lowe's. And this is my begonia Sinbad that I rescued from Lowe's. And you would have seen me cut it back to just stumps. And this is what came of the stump. I've shown this on my Instagram before. She's putting out all these beautiful new leaves. She's constantly in bloom for me. Of course, she's not right now, but she is getting a little bit too much light on this side from the grow light so i'm gonna have to take care of that but i've been wanting to cut her back again anyway because i want to take a cutting to share with a friend of mine who really wants this plant and i can't seem to find another one anywhere so we're just gonna cut mine and try and propagate it for her and see what happens i've had kind of like a 50 50 success rate rooting these in water so i don't really know why some of them are successful and some of them just seem to rot and die but hopefully this one won't <laughs> and that one's probably going to stay in its pot where it is but i have this begonia that i don't know the name of she's cute she's not too far off from the look of like the polka dot one they're just smaller and it has green on the back it's not red on the back like the whitey eye so i don't know i don't know the name of this one but she cute she's cute she was 9.95 i don't remember where i picked her up i think like at rosedale or something and then i have my begonia my special angel i think this variety is called i like her curly leaves they're kind of like the crackle and rosy has like these curly adorable leaves and i started her as a little cutting and now she's a nice fully established plant in her little pot with her emo bangs i've shared her on my instagram before she's fine she's gonna stay in this little pot and then i have this one that needs water <laughs> i don't know what this one's called either maybe it's on here begonia torch pink angel wing torch pink begonia and this one's from mcnaughton's i'm not exactly sure david picked this one up for me i like that the leaves are really little and they don't really have any spots on them i think they start to get them as they mature and this one just doesn't really have any new one does here but it's cute i like the colors um it definitely needs water and maybe like something to stake it up because they'll grow and they'll just flop over and that's fine for a little while but then they start to look like this girl over here you know next i want to show you i don't know what this one is she lost some of herself to the thrips and then she's been putting out some new growth here again i don't know what this is called different leaf shape they still call them angel wing begonias in the store so i don't really know but she's cool i like the shape of her leaves i don't know what i'm gonna do with this if i'm gonna cut this one back or not or leave it i'm definitely gonna pot it into something smaller oh this one was grown by costa farms i got this one at walmart i think this is the only plant i've ever bought at a Walmart before so then the last one that you would have seen already is my Linda Dawn she's looking sad AF she needs a complete chop and repot and to be put in a better spot where she's gonna get more light because she's just not getting enough right now I put this trellis in her temporarily just to hold her up because I didn't have any stakes because if I take it out She's just, oh, she's staying up now. But before she was just completely flopped over, looking real sad. I'd like to use this for a Hoya, so not a begonia. I'll be happy to 
be able to get this one into something nicer. She's so cute. Let's bring some of them in the frame, right? She's so pretty, pretty. So begonia care. How the heck do you keep them happy and not looking depressing like some of these do? This one's not getting enough light. I can tell by the little baby leaves that are coming in and the fact that she's just not really putting out very many leaves at all. She's in a spot where she's getting ambient light, but a lot of plants that I tend to put in that spot right there don't do well. I have added a new grow light to that area, so hopefully they're gonna be getting a little bit more, at least ambient light than they were before. They definitely want bright, indirect light because if you give them too much light, then you'll get this bleaching like I have here on the Sinbad that's just a little bit too close to the grow light on this side of the plant because you can see this side is perfectly fine. This is one of my favorites. They're kind of soft and fuzzy and they just have this beautiful pink to them and the, the back is kind of pink on these. You want to find a nice happy in between. I like having these near a light source but just pulled back so that they're not getting that direct bright harsh light because they will burn and they're not going to be happy the crackling rosie however has a grow light that sits very close to her here and she can tolerate it and she actually seems to be loving it she's putting out all this new growth up here so I think that it also depends on the color of the plant. Like this one's got darker leaves. So I think it can tolerate a little bit brighter light as opposed to the Sinbad who obviously has very light colored, more delicate, soft leaves. So she's not tolerating that bright light as well as this one because her leaves are much thicker and sturdier as well lighting wise definitely want to give them enough light just not bright burning light and take into account the color and the texture the thickness of the leaves usually plants that feel more delicate are not going to do well in bright light if that makes sense watering <laughs> These are thirsty plants, I'm not going to lie to you, and that is why we're going to be repotting some of them into a pot that I've got here from Mudila, Mudella, however you say it. I think it's Mudila, but they sent me one of those self-watering pots that has like the wick things, so we're going to test one of those out on some of these begonias and see if that helps because I do water these every like four or five days, if not more frequently than that, kind of depending on the size of the plant and what it's in. So this one's in terracotta and it's in a very chunky mix that has a lot of bark and perlite and things like that in it. So she tends to be much thirstier. She's also right up against a grow light, like I said. So she's drying out a lot faster in this terracotta and with all of that light she's sucking all the moisture out of the dirt so she's thirsty but it's okay because she's also right next to my humidifier so that helps they do like humidity they don't need it necessarily i don't think that they need it to be happy but if you want them to really thrive and take off they do like higher humidity so they're thirsty and they're humidity hose. They're just not humidity hose to the same extent as like calatheas and other prayer plants. I do find the cane begonias to be a lot easier than the rex begonias in that sense as well as them just not requiring as much water and as much humidity. I think because they have these thicker stems and petioles that they do a better job holding on to moisture for longer than some of their you know cousins who I've had successfully for months at a time and then one day they just they all died I have one actually I lied I have one rex begonia and she's like sort of kind of alive right is this even a rex begonia I think so I just thought it was cute because it's silvery. I don't actually know what it is. It just says houseplant on it and it was $5. Because then I had a, 
a begonia break dance and, and this is what it looks like now. Oh, and there's dirt everywhere. So that's sad because this one was really pretty. You guys remember it's like iridescent when you put the flash on. That one's going in the dead pile. So yeah, they, they definitely want water and I definitely need a stool to sit on because this is painful, but it's fine. So my suggestion to you would be to put it in something ceramic or to keep it in a nursery container inside of something else so that you can just throw water in there. I definitely recommend using filtered water or collecting rainwater. It's not necessary, but they do prefer it and it will prevent some of the crispy edges and stuff because when you get the crispy tips, it's not just a lack of humidity. A lot of the time it's also the plant trying to get rid of those minerals because leaves they do this thing i don't know how to say the word it starts with a g i'll leave it on the screen but it's basically like think of it like sweating they like sweat out the excess water through their leaves and a lot of the time those minerals will build up and cause them to go brown and be crispy if that makes sense and if you know how to pronounce the word that i put on the screen then help a sister out <laughs> and put it down in the comments just the comment section below it's just gonna say comment sister below you guys i'm really tired okay it's that time of the month anyway too much information jackie so yeah humidity they like a lot of water so that's why most of these you'll see have tons of mosquito bits at the top because fungus gnats love to be around my begonias because they're usually moist they like being moist. They don't want to be soaking wet, but they do like to be moist. So once the first couple of inches of soil is dry, I water them. You feel me? Definitely put them in something that's not as chunky. Obviously you want it to be aerated, but a nice like mossy mix, put something in there, even cocoa coir chunks. Like I really like the Becca De La Tanks soil for that reason. It has like chunks of cocoa coir in there that are going to hold on to that moisture for you a little bit in the soil. So as well as it helps it aerate the soil because they're like chunks as opposed to just having it pulled apart in there. So temperature wise, you can probably assume that they don't like it when it gets cold. They are a tropical plant after all. And usually plants that like humidity and to be watered a lot also prefer higher temperatures so you're not going to want to have these near a drafty window in the winter time i'm actually considering getting a heat mat this year for winter and keeping my humidifier on and and hoping that that will maybe keep some of my more delicate and rare plants happy over the winter if you're interested in seeing that let me know in the comment section and i'll do a video on getting ready for winter with my plants not too soon though, okay? Let's, let's get to fall and enjoy that for a little while first, hopefully, because it's been really humid in the Northeast, like really humid, unbearably humid. I haven't even wanted to go out there. That's why I'm still so white right now. I didn't even get tan this year, you guys. I went to the beach that one time with David and my family that you would have seen in my vlog for August, and that was it. We got some color, and then a week later, we were white again. I'm just glowing. I just enjoy having a nice tan because then I don't really have to put so much crap on my face to be on film because then I look dead. Do you know what I mean? Anyway, so yeah, they're thirsty. So am I. Um, fertilizer. I never really talk much about fertilizing my plants because I tend to forget to fertilize my plants, but I have my fertilizer here that I use. I use the Espoma liquid fertilizer for you know all purpose whatever indoor or it just says for organic gardening so indoor and outdoor plants it doesn't smell terrible because it's not like fishy or anything but once i'm done with this everybody keeps recommending liquid dirt so but this is a big bottle so it's taken me a while to get through it and also because i forget i literally just put a few drops into my watering can and then I top off the plants with it. So I need to do that. 
but yeah, they like to be fertilized during their growing season at least once a month, if not like every other week, if that makes sense. Some people do it weekly, more power to you. I can't keep up. And now basically the only thing that's left to talk about, I feel like is propagating and repotting. And that's something that we're gonna do today. So let me move some of these out of the way a little bit because I wanna show you the, I wanna open actually the box with you that I got from Mudila. So I haven't opened it yet. They sent me, let me make sure my address isn't on it. No. They sent me another package. You guys would have seen me open up a plant stand and put it together that they sent me. Sorry, I'm a little out of frame. But I just want to open this really quick. Another box within a box. So that's cool. <laughs> Excuse my cozy around the house shorts. You weren't supposed to see those. But this is funny because it's actually called the lazy flower pot, which is really funny because I kind of always say that I'm pretty lazy about my plant care. So I've been wanting to try something along these lines so we appreciate you Mudila, for sending this this video is sponsored by them as well so we appreciate it definitely go and show them some love on amazon check out their shop they have lots of planty stuff for reasonable prices in my opinion and i'll definitely be testing out more of their stuff in the future to help you guys make good purchase decisions. Everything that I talk about are products that I actually like and use and nothing that I don't feel comfortable sharing, if that makes sense. I say no a lot more than I say yes to these companies. So this is what it looks like. Screw on the legs to the bottom of the outer cylinder. Okay, so it's got little leggies. Little leggies and a wick. This is probably going to be a long video. I'm sorry. <laughs> I hope you guys are enjoying it. If you are, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Watch some of the ads. Don't skip over them. That's how I make money so I can keep making more content for you. If you haven't noticed, I have been uploading a lot more frequently and i hope that you've been enjoying more content from me there's a lot of plastic in here for like no reason at all but it's <laughs> we're gonna follow the instructions and we're gonna screw the legs on to the bottom seems pretty simple right I'm a sucker for a plant stand with some legs on it, you guys. <laughs> you know me, you know I love it when they have little feet. I actually made a couple myself that have little feet. I just never, I've never shown you guys. I want to make some. I think I might include it in my next vlog for the month of September. David and I like to make stuff with clay and I've been wanting to make some more planters. So if you guys are interested in seeing that. Let me know and we'll film it probably this weekend. We've got a lot of content planned for you guys that I'm excited about. Thread the cotton rope through the holes in the nursery pot. This is the nursery pot. These are the holes. Oh, cute. And these holes are like netted. Do you see that? So like nothing can fall out through them. Interesting. I'm not mad at the quality of this, you know, for a plastic pot, it makes it look uh, like ceramic and nicer than it actually is. Nicer than a lot of the self-watering pots that I see. So then this just goes in here like that. Purchase two AA batteries and put them into the battery box if needed. What is the battery? Insert the battery box into the cavity at the bottom of the outer cylinder. Oh, shit. <laughs> so it has a battery box, but I don't exactly know. I guess you could set it up on, like, like a timer to water it. 
Slide open the water inlet and fill in water. Move your plants and the soil into the nursery pot. Oh, it's an alarm to let you know if it's empty. Okay, so I guess it will make a noise like an alarm when there's no water left in it, which is actually pretty cool. I don't know if I have any AA batteries, but we're definitely gonna go check. So this is the water thing where you're supposed to put the water in. And then it goes down into the bottom here and it hangs out there. You could see the pot is sits up on these risers in there. And then I guess somehow it detects when there's no water left in the bottom and it'll beep at you. Interesting, huh? I'm, I'm not mad at it, you guys. I'm kind of into it. I'm not going to lie. Basically, now all we have to do is figure out what we're going to pot in here and then where we're going to put it. But I'm not, I like the look of it. It's actually really nice. I'm going to go run and see if I have any AA batteries. I want to test out this alarm. I'm curious about it. So bear with me for one moment and then we're going to repot some begonias. <laughs> I feel like an old lady. It's fine. Okay, so I couldn't find my AA batteries. So I just took them out of the remote for now just so we can test this out because I'm really curious. And I'm going to take the battery box out of the bottom like the instructions say, open it up, and it's literally just a battery box. And then we put it back in here somehow. I guess that's the D noise that they were talking about. D. Okay, so I think that's the sound it makes when it's empty because it's empty okay we get it you're empty we didn't put water in you yet okay we get it you d when it's empty now we know what it sounds like so i'm gonna find AAA batteries that i can permanently keep in here and then i can happily update you guys and let you know how long this can go for before it starts yelling at you to put water in it but i suppose this is a really cool feature for those of us who are really crap at remembering to water our plants you know it happens i'm pretty good with the begonias because they're literally right in front of my face so i tend to take my leftover drinking water since it's filtered and i dump it in there but move that aside for now because we're gonna be using this to plant in I just kind of need to decide what I'm going to plant in there. I was thinking about doing a mixed pot of different begonias. What do you guys think? My Linda Dawn needs some love. Like, it's probably just going to end up being stems, honestly. Because if I cut them back to just stems, then they'll put out some new growth, hopefully. Especially with a little bit of help from this self-watering pot this one needs some love i thought these would actually look cute together since they caught they kind of complement each other nicely and then i don't know maybe this one the torch would look good in there with that because the rest of them i think maybe they look good on their own they just need to be repotted into some smaller containers i'm gonna cut this one i'm literally just gonna cut it back to some stems. I'm going to leave a node where it can grow from though, of course. This one's really sad. Super sad. This is really satisfying though, I'm not going to lie to you. And now we've just got some stumps. <laughs> but that's okay. We're going to take these out because they do have roots. And then these are gonna go into water. So I do have my little propagation stations from Modern Botanical. I am getting some more. I'm really excited about it. And then they could finally go up on the wall. And I'm thinking that some begonia cuttings will just look really sweet in here. Boom, begonia cuttings. Linda Dawn's one of my favorites. She's really beautiful when she's not looking beat. And then this one needs to be cut as well. I'm going to keep some of these 
in the back because they're doing just fine, but I'm gonna cut these longer vines and try and propagate some of them because they're like kind of out of control. <laughs> Don't you think? So we're gonna cut you there. And we're going to cut you to there, cut you to there, Ooh, she's so pretty isn't she? And then we've got a bunch of those cuttings here, so I'll put them in a big begonia cutting pile. I'll cut this one back as well, she's so cute, look at how freaking cute she is, I love this one. And that's what we're left with here. So, I'm going to separate these, take them out of this terrible soil from Costa Farms, and pot them up together. I think the three of these will look cute together. So, I have my bucket of dirt here from the next gardener, which is nice and mossy, like not moss, it's got um, the cocoa coir in there, which is nice. So it is a nice mix for begonias. Like I said, they like to have that extra moisture. I'm just gonna empty these out into this box. I'm all like a little in the frame now, I'm sorry, but I need to sit down. I'll take this one out of its pot. It doesn't have too many roots but it is a healthy plant so i'm not worried about it as much of the soil off oh it's in a plug as you can see got that mesh plug around it plants don't usually love that because it kind of suffocates the roots a little bit so it's a good thing that we're getting in here and doing this today i didn't want to do this today i'm exhausted but i i knew that i had to and today was my only opportunity to do so so i hope that you guys are enjoying hanging out with me at least. I feel like I should tell you a story or something. I um, posted a vlog recently where I was pretty emotional at the start of it and I haven't actually posted that yet. Like today's Thursday and it goes up tomorrow so I'm really nervous about it and I, I really hope that, I don't know. It's one of those things where, like, you want to talk about it, but you also don't want to talk about it. Like, it's it feels good to talk about it, and I want to let you guys in on, like, more personal aspects of my life. But it's hard, too, because then you're worried about, like, people's opinions. You don't necessarily... I don't even necessarily, like, want to talk about it. Like, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it, but I'm sure that there are going to be plenty of sweet comments and I do appreciate those. Again, I have not posted it yet. It goes up tomorrow and it was really hard for me to not edit that whole entire thing out. I edited it down to not much, honestly. It was like a 10 minute long clip that I edited down to like three minutes. So here are the roots of the stumps. <laughs> for the Linda Dawn. I'm gonna leave those here. Then I'm gonna take out this Benigo pink. I always want to say Beningo, but yeah. So um, if you didn't catch, I went through a pretty bad breakup. Um, I actually didn't know we were broken up. We were just on a break and uh, he started dating somebody else and didn't tell me. So <laughs> that's fun, right? But it's all good because sometimes we don't realize it at the time because it just hurts so badly and it does really hurt. But, you know, I'm able to recognize that that just like wasn't my person and there was somebody like way better suited for me out there. And I'm much happier now because I'm finally in a relationship where I feel loved and respected and not judged and I feel safe to be myself which is good and I hope that everybody can find that not to like gas him up or anything but he's pretty cool these are the roots on the Benigo I hope this is deep enough I don't know if this is going to be deep enough for all of these plants we'll see but that is that so I'm going to get rid of that dirt and get my new dirt over here my big bucket of dirt 
I do like this soil and I do think my plants like it a lot as well because it is so light and fluffy. You guys can tell how light and fluffy it is. Make a little bed of that on the bottom and then we're gonna sort this out. I'm sorry for like my, big. they're like all stretched out too. These are literally just my around the house cozy shorts. So I wasn't really anticipating you guys seeing me from the waist down today. We have some stumps of some different things, but I think I'm gonna put the torch like right in the front here because she's super cute. And then put some Linda Dawn stumps. I'm just gonna spread them out really. And then take some Benigo stumps, stick them in there. In the back of the plant, I'm gonna put some of the ones that are still have leaves. This is very experimental. I don't know what this is gonna look like. A few weeks and a few months from now, but I'm hoping that it's gonna turn out well <laughs> because it would be a real bummer if it didn't. I'm just gonna cut this back a little bit more. I'm gonna fill it in with some more dirt. But like I said, the last time I did this with my Sinbad, I think it turned out pretty well. Not all of the stumps were successful, like this one's not doing great, but these are perfectly fine. You can see where I cut it here. You can see this one where I had originally cut it here, and it shot out all new stems. So that's the cool thing about begonias. They tend to get pretty leggy and out of control. I have seen them in hanging baskets and I don't think that looks bad, but for this experiment, I'm really interested in trying out this self-watering pot. So I will obviously update you guys on how this is going in a month or so from now. Let me know in the comment section if that's something you're interested in and if you're excited to see that. So I'm excited to see how this goes for sure. Plus it's helping me consolidate some of my begonias a little bit that have gotten a little out of control and they're taking up a lot of space. Just continuing to backfill here and make sure that they're not buried too deep. I don't want them rotting. I'll make sure that they're sitting where they need to be sitting. But yeah, I, I hope that you guys enjoyed that last vlog that I'm really nervous about going up tomorrow. I mean, it's mostly plant shopping, like the rest of my vlogs, but I like to throw in personal stuff, some plant chores. There's the throw update in there. And um, yeah, I don't know. I like letting you guys see a little bit more of my personal life and, and share some of those experiences with you so that you can maybe understand me a little bit better and I don't know who knows maybe it helps somebody I know that I tend to watch a lot of YouTube videos of people who have been through bad breakups and are going through heartbreak because it makes me feel less alone in it I guess it's not Something that I like to talk about often because then people are always like, well, you're in a relationship now, like, you shouldn't be still so upset about it, but it, <laughs> we were together for almost eight years and he really did me wrong. That's not something that you just magically get over just because you're with somebody else, you know what I mean? It doesn't mean that I don't love the person that I'm with, it's just a really traumatic and painful thing that I went through so obviously it affects me and thankfully I have a really wonderful understanding man in my life who doesn't take it the wrong way if that makes sense I'm also always worried that I'm sharing too much information I'm not trying to like put anybody on blast or throw anybody under the bus by any means. I cut out a lot from that video just purely because 
I didn't want to put his relation his relationship that he's in now on blast because homegirl still doesn't know that he was lying to me and her for like a year so I'm not it's none of it's not my business okay this is what it's looking like right now not so great <laughs> obviously but I do have a little torch in the front there and then hopefully the rest will come up behind it it's definitely looking pretty sad but it's fine everything is gonna be fine so I'm gonna pop it in here I'm gonna fill this bitch up with water let me get my watering can oh okay, so I got my watering can <laughs> and I'm just gonna fill up this little hole with with water I did fill this with filtered water from my zero water filter highly recommend that over Brita if you don't have one better for the environment as well you don't have to keep buying bottled water thankfully here in new york we have some pretty clean water as it is i don't know how to know when this is full but yeah i like to um drink the filtered zero water it tastes better it filters out more stuff than brita well now i'm curious yeah, I could definitely use more, but it should be all right for now. And um, that's that, you guys. So this is my really sad looking begonia, but hopefully she's going to fill out. So in case you missed it, I have the red torch in the front here. I have some Linda Dawn stubs kind of in the middle scattered about here. And then I have my Benigo pink in the back so I am hoping that it's going to turn into a really beautiful mixed pot and not a complete and utter disaster so if you like this video give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything from me I will have this linked down below for you guys I hope that I see you guys in the next one and uh, let me know if you have any questions that I did not answer for you about how to care for your begonias i'm more than happy to help i forget things all the time when i'm recording so i wouldn't be surprised if there was something i forgot and i am going to put all these cuttings here look at all these cuttings into some water and we'll see what happens with those maybe we'll end up putting some of them back into the top of this pot here as well so I'm gonna go. I appreciate you fam and I will see you soon. Bye!